the station focused on what's relevant to you and your family. This is KARK 4 News at 10. Ronnie Smith is a name you may not know, and that could be a good thing. For the last 30 years, he's worked for you. 23 of those years as a homicide detective with the Little Rock Police Department. Day in, day out, he has dealt with the worst the city has to offer. And many in law enforcement say he's one of the best at it. Now he's ending his shift after it began more than 30 years ago, more or less, right where you are, in front of a TV. The story you're about to see is true. It was the closest thing to reality TV could offer for the time. Through the 60s 12, and the 12, 70s, it created a career path for Ronnie Smith. Started when I was in junior high, uh, watching shows like uh, Adam 12 and uh, Dragnet. Uh, I guess it would have been Adam 12, that was my favorite show, and, and that kind of piqued my interest in it. And uh, I kept that interest through high school and through college, and applied here at the Little Rock Police Department, and got the chance to come to work here. And, that's it was 1976. It was a big deal if you arrested somebody and they had a weapon. Uh, that, that was a, a big arrest back in 76. Smith and the city would change. The 70s became the 80s. We have a warrant number, however, at the time the call was put in. We were I remember my first homicide was on a Thanksgiving night, 1983, in the Central High area. The 80s became the 90s. stands out. We had 76 homicides that year and that's a lot of homicides for the city a little lot. Uh, yeah we were we were real busy that year. I can remember one case that I worked where a woman was uh, just got home from buying groceries and uh, there was a drive-by shooting and she got caught in a crossfire and was hit several different times but luckily she didn't die but she got hit with I think an AK-47. It was just this senseless violence. Smith never flinched, never looked back since that Thanksgiving Day 1983. He found a home in homicide for the past 23 years. 20, be 23 years in September. That's, that's a long time for homicide, is it? Uh, yes, it is. It can kind of wear and tear on you and kind of wear you down. And it's a heavy responsibility because, uh, you know, you're trying to uh, guard the interest of that dead person. Guarding that interest and tracking that person's killer. Sometimes you may get to a crime scene and all you have is just a, a, a dead body and no witnesses, uh, no suspects. Leaves little time for anything else. I've gone to work uh, sometimes and come back 24 hours later. Uh, you, you're subject to call, you know, all hours of the day, all types of weather. Uh, and uh, you just never know when your day is going to end. Or when it will begin again, when another life ends at the hands of someone else. When you get into the investigation, you never know what you're going to uncover. You never, ne you never know what you're going to find. There is, however, one tragic thing at the center of every homicide investigation. Instinct tells the average person to turn away, while a detective knows it's his job to get closer. It takes a while to get used to, you know, looking at somebody that's dead, but you try to, I don't mean to sound hard-hearted or cold-natured, but you kind of have to detach yourself from that part of the investigation because there's nothing you can do right now for him, but you can work for his family and you can work to uh, find out who, who did that to that person and bring it to justice. Two cases stand out. Smith remembers each victim very well. Henry Callanan and David Barnett. Barnett was just trying to get something to eat. At the Waffle House, and uh, two individuals came in to rob the Waffle House, and uh, uh, he became involved trying to prevent a robbery, and uh, he was ended up shot and killed. Henry Callanan was walking to his car in the McDonald's parking lot. He was taking the day's receipts out to his car, and two guys approached him from behind the drive through menu, and one of them fired a shot at him and hit him in the chest and uh, he died at uh, Baptist Medical Center. For Smith, those two cases didn't hit close to home. They came right through the roof. Both Barnett and Callanan were Little Rock police officers. May 1993, Officer Henry Callanan, uh, he was a senior member on the police department at the time. He was working off duty with Officer David Barnett. Uh, back in the early 90s, he was 
off duty eating at the Waffle House. Homicide found the killers and put them in prison. We have a warrant number. Have Two cases out of the 187 homicide investigations he's headed up and the hundreds he's assisted on. He may not be able to share the tragedy of all of them, but there's one case he doesn't want to forget. In Little Rock, Arkansas, there has been no sign of a newborn baby. Me, uh, what my most favorite case is, and, it, and it's not a homicide case, it's that baby kidnapping case. Uh, a, a woman posing as a nurse went into a doctor's hospital at 300 South University. It's around 10, 30, 11 o'clock one night, and I walked out with a newborn infant. Uh, the mom was feeding the baby. She told the mom that uh, she had to uh, take the baby and weigh it. Doctors say that the infant's life is in danger. And NBC About 10 days, that was uh, a round-the-clock operation. Good news from Arkansas tonight. The premature baby boy stolen from his mother's arms in a Little Rock hospital two weeks ago has been uh, found in Hot Springs, Arkansas, alive and well. And I went to her house and got the baby and uh, uh, matched the footprints of the baby. And uh, we were able to unite the baby and the mom. That's why I like that case, is because it ended happily. Smith has had ample opportunities to move into a different line of police work, away from the physical and emotional grind of homicide. 23 years is a very long time, a lifetime for some rookies. Just the same, he says he's never found a reason to leave homicide. The family should come first, but uh, I, ha I have a daughter that stood by me and uh, through those uh, busy years, so uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that. And this, I never hated to come to work you know I didn't there may have been some unpleasant things I had to do once I got to work that I wasn't looking forward to but uh, I was one thing I learned from my dad is that I uh, you know love your job and uh, I have I've loved my job since from day one now as Ronnie Smith gets used to life on the other side of the yellow tape he's leaving behind a very impressive record lead detective on 187 homicides 158 solved but most of the time it's, it's it's good old-fashioned police work, getting out there and on the streets and uh, putting the shoe leather to the street and, and doing police work. As for the 29 unsolved, he's taking a little bit of each one with him. The, the sad part about leaving the job is that sometimes I can't enjoy the leaving. It's because I remember those unsolved homicides that I have that maybe I didn't do everything I could have done or I could have done things differently. The fact is, and just about any cop will tell you, no one could have done it any better. And Smith has done his best to leave some of that behind at 700 West Markham. I've always tried to do my best, and hopefully, you know, other younger detectives can, can learn from me and, and pick that up. I hope my, through my time here that I've impacted somebody and, and helped somebody out. Smith can't walk away all at once because of all the cases he's closed. He still has about a year or more that he'll have to spend in court testifying, sticking up for the rights of all those victims.